Hi, it's Kirsty from Adeline Country Cottage. Welcome back. Um, today I would like to share with you dyeing papers um, for your journal. I've got a few things here that I actually dye with myself um, and that being uh, instant coffee, coffee beans grounded up, tea, uh, tea bags, loose tea, cocoa, mica, which uh, you can either use, you can use um, eyeshadow with that. Uh, there's fresh berries, uh, fresh leaves, dried flowers, lavender petals, hibiscus petals, oregano, and then on the spices side, you've got turmeric, you've got pepper, nutmeg, uh, there's coarse and fine grade Himalayan pink salt, and then there's also the smoked um, sea salt there. Now, I use these through my papers just to give it uh, to try out different ways of um, aging up or prettying up my papers and I found that these ones so far haven't let me down. So I, without further ado, I'd like to show you some of the papers. Okay, so there's a lot of ladies already that are tea dyeing um, with different types of teas and uh, coffee dyeing. Um, to age up their papers for their journals and for their mixed media work. Um, to, uh, I just wanted to show you here on the different um, effects that it takes on different papers um, So because they, they give and throw a different look each time. Now with the tea, uh, this particular paper is coffee paper so it's got more of a creamier look. Um, to to the copy paper uh, sorry photocopy paper rather uh, music paper and then of course with the vintage paper it, it throws a bit of yellow and tends to also pick up some of the um, printing of some of the other pages when you do that now this here is remnants of when I was uh, a berry dyeing paper with um, fresh berries. It was actually on the the pan, and it had to it, it actually absorbed it. So, um, which can be another cool effect if you like. So that's tea, um, instant ta uh, instant and Italian coffee. Italian coffee is the sort of type that you get when you go to a coffee shop and you could probably go in there and ask them if you can have some of their granules and um, it, it, it tends to throw a little bit more of it on the darker side but almost um, like a um, so I don't know it's like it comes across quite thin compared to the instant coffee I mean this is on photocopy paper here um, and this one here is actually on a, a 1930s uh, music paper and it really gives a beautiful effect, um, quite aged um, and these have actually been dried in the oven and then pressed so that that way that they're nice and flat but um, you know that that's a really really nice effect with the Italian coffee. Sometimes I, when it's wet, I throw a few pieces of coffee granules on top, which gives a little bit of a speckled effect as well. So that's always cool to try that out um, uh, with the Italian coffee. Now with the instant coffee, it tends to be a little bit more on the heavier side. You can actually uh, gauge or not gauge whether you want it um, a, a really thick strength or perhaps a, a very light strength depending on how much coffee you put in the water um, so this one's on photocopy paper and this one is uh, this is tracing paper um, and then pop these are all popped in the oven afterwards um, this is on the graph paper music paper and I tend to leave a bit of the the, the um, granules on so that that way it gives a bit of a bleed type effect as well. This is actually on uh, photo paper. It tends to really come up quite grungy, um, but you know I don't mind it. It's it's quite nice um, on the yellowy side. Um, this is on a matte wallpaper. 
um, actually this is Laura Ashley I think this wallpaper which almost um, looks like it's caramel looking in the in the color so that's quite nice and then of course this one's got a bit of a sheen to it um, a pearl effect and it's it sort of doesn't really stick I, I think you can actually rub if you're really persistent you can actually rub that off but you know it still comes up quite nice quite aged and quite beautiful okay moving on to the next batch so this paper here is uh, uh, dyed with coffee um, and, and then of course uh, I've pulled it out and added pink sea salt uh, which is the fine grade and then um, popped it in the oven and then after that I quickly ran it through the the dye again and popped it straight back in the oven again and it's come out with um, like this really fine granulate looking um, effect on there which is um, it's quite it's okay it's not exactly what I kind of expected it to turn out like but you know it's um, it's still still okay to use and with this one here um, same same applies um, all I did with this one was um, made up a, the fine granule uh, Himalayan sea salt into water and once that I dipped it in the dye I tipped it over um, the actual page and then threw it straight in the oven and you know it's come up with this beautiful textured feel yeah you could scratch that off but I guess you could seal that in so that that way um, you still can have that cool effect underneath um, which which is uh, which is quite good um, this one here is the just been um, tea dyed I dropped on uh, the uh, coarse sea salt um, and popped it in the oven and you know it's done all these little gradual um, circles all over the place and you know I really like the effect it's come up quite good and you know wh where it's been sitting it's actually absorbed it so it's left all the inner um, circles with these white spots um, which is pretty cool as well and and this was the site done in the same effect however and I forgot my stencil to bring up with me actually I had to move upstairs because my father-in-law was cutting the grass anywho um, I laid a stencil, tea dyed it, laid a stencil over the top, dropped all the coarse uh, sea salt in inside the stencil, which was of a tree, Sl uh, lifted it off slightly, left the sea salt on, and then popped it in the oven. And you know, look at that, come out like a, a, you know, a beautiful little tree. It's nice. Um, this one here is done with smoked sea salt, um, dyed with coffee, um, all the granules very similar to the other sea salt um, except with the the smoked uh, sea, uh, sea salt it has it's got it's sort of like a, a brownie color um, or it looks like it's got this brownie sort of effect to it so that actually um, bled out onto the page which create helped create that effect so but still very similar to the other normal sea salt uh, pepper now pepper okay I sneezed a bit with this one um, tea dyed this and sprinkled on coarse black pepper some of the specks stayed on um, you can sort of you really give it a good rub you can get them off um, that was that was okay left a you know little tiny specks and um, throughout the page um, just got to give it a rub down after you've done it because um, uh, you don't want to have pepper all over your work anyway so that one's quite good now this one uh, tea tea dyed um, with this one actually let me smell it yep yeah, tea dyed this one and I've actually when I let it sit for a little bit and then I threw on some oregano leaves oh sorry probably can't see that um, threw on some oregano leaves and it sort of gave a bit of a yellowy look about it and I'm really loving how the texture um, that it's left behind um, to the page which is quite good now this one um, I left a lot of it's still the same um, I tea dyed it um, 
tea dyed it, left a lot of tea on it and then threw uh, the oregano leaves and it actually came out almost like a peachy pink and I'm really loving that. That's really, it's really cool um, the effect that it actually gave, um, which is pretty cool. I like it. I'd probably go with the um, avocado uh, dyed lace because um, it's very similar in colour. Yeah, so that one's always cool. Okay, nutmeg. I tried out the nutmeg. It's um, it's sort of with the nutmeg. It sort of left out granules where they um, some stayed on the page where you can't get it off, and some are lifted off the page where you can just rub it away. But you know that's pretty cool if you if you this one's done with coffee. This one actually. Um, the, it left little little marks here and there. Um, not sure if you can actually see that because um, my um, camera keeps flaring out um, and going blurry. It's not focusing in anyhow. Um, yeah, so this one's always cool as well. Trying out uh, um, different spices it really works. Now this one, this one's cocoa powder. Now, uh, cocoa powder chocolate, um, same procedure, made it into a, a, a dye bath. Um, once I've, I dipped it in, brought it out, I threw a few coffee, uh, sorry, go uh, coffee, sorry, start again. Um, sea salt over the top, which is um, how it's made these extra little uh, brown marks on here of aged effect like it was going to burn through the paper unfortunately the coffee smell does not stay and I love chocolate so um, I was hoping it would stay but it hasn't so moving along now berries who doesn't like berries okay I made up a, a, a mixture in a pot of and this one's actually fruit of the forest it was raspberries strawberries and blackberries um, Mix it up in a pot with a bit of water. I made it into like a paste. Uh, this time around, I didn't strain it. Normally I would strain it so that it's you don't get all the fleshy bits or anything like that. But you know, for this, I wanted to show you uh, how the effect can be. Um, painting it on and then flipping over the side that goes to the pan once it's been baked actually tends to add a sheen or a film over the top which is quite cool. Loving the specs that it made. Um, the flip side is how you could see where I brushed it. Um, and the other side, as I mentioned, when it sits down after you brush it, it evens everything out. So um, I found that once you brush it on, you tip it over a couple of times so that that way you don't get the brushed effects. But you know, the little pieces that are left um, I, I quite like it's actually embedded into the paper you can't actually there are some that you can scratch off but the most of the time um, they stay on you know so and that's just on photocopy paper now this one's on the that vintage paper as I said the source paper um, quite grungy if you don't uh, flip it over um, it gives all these nice um, grungy effects to the page, but the top side now look at that How amazing is this color like it's beautiful and um, the sides Turn a little bit brown if you leave it in a little bit longer Which gives it a bit more of a an agey type effect and that is really beautiful. It, I mean the camera's probably not even doing it any justice. It's just fabulous. It's gorgeous. If you're going to be doing a pink uh, journal, um, I would highly recommend dyeing with berries. It is beautiful. Now, lavender. Lavender tea, um, which is the this type. You pick it up from your health shop. Um, they... Sorry, just focusing, just in case it's out of focus. Um, see how they've, they're uh, quite uh, darker than what you would get in the supermarket, I found. Um, I just dyed the, the paper um, with tea, and I dropped 
some of the petals on and see how it's brought out some of the blue flecks from the lavender it looks fantastic I think I'm going to, going to have to do um, try this again but put a lot more um, petals on just to get a um, more definition to the page and add more um, interest um, yeah so that, that one's pretty cool I really like that now this one is um, hibiscus now hibiscus is um, another tea uh, can you can pick it up from the uh, health food shop now this was dyed I originally threw oregano over the top and then I thought I'd throw a few of those flecks of um, the, uh, the hibiscus um, petals on and I tell you what, it makes the most beautiful colours. You know, you go from indigo to pink. Um, and I just love the way that it bleeds out. Um, and it's just amazing, amazing, adds beautiful effect. Um, more on the natural, sort of if you want to go on that organic side. And it bleeds right through the page. So, you know, you don't have to dye the other side because it does it automatically. Now on the other hand, <clears throat> pardon me, I made it the hibiscus um, tea uh, and infused the hibiscus flowers and then I baked it. Once the heat source gets to it, it turns it to almost like um, a purple grey. Um, you get this beautiful effect around the edges. Um, it's kind of like when you get you burn out photos if, um, if you've ever done photography it kind of burns out the edges um, you know and that was it dipped in tea first then inside um, the hibiscus tea and you know I really love that effect if you're wanting to do a greyish type pages um, maybe without using the normal tea just use the hibiscus tea and it'll give you a beautiful grey effect so that's always good. Um, now to this one, turmeric, 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 spice, um, yellow. Now I actually allowed it to lay across the page to give a bit more of effect and it's kind of got a bit of a rough texture to it. Um, it is uh, quite granularly. You'd probably be able to still rub some more off. I mean, I've rubbed it as best I could. Um, but it also adds to that effect uh, and it's quite um, dark on the photocopy paper um, and sort of light but on the vintage paper it tends to throw a different yellow so this is more of a burnt yellow whereas this is more on the canary yellow um, on the vintage paper so that one's quite good so if you're doing something like a sunflower a journal or something along the lines of yellows roses or anything like that for a journal or mixed media this is a really good way of dyeing your paper yellow to give that a that cool effect so that one's really good mm -hmm. 